Hey everybody, we are back reporting live from the bed. I have been a bit under the weather for a while. Um, so sorry if my voice is not projecting as much as I would like it to. Um, but yes, I still wanted to get this video out and yeah, just bear with me while I'm a little sick. I just wanted to be in a place where I felt more comfortable. <clears throat> Today we're doing Mercury in the seventh house. Um, we have Mercury and if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my notes. We have Mercury. Um, this is the planet of communication of all kinds. This includes text, phone calls, emails, uh, written notes, letters, even little sticky post-it notes count as our Mercury uh, verbal written. Mercury is also our literal voice, the tone, um, the sound, the accent, the volume. <clears throat> it is our conscious mind. How do we get from point A to point B? How do we solve a math problem? Stuff like that we actually actively think about. And it's also the kind of topics that we may be interested in reading about or talking about with others. Um, and then we have our seventh house. This is the house of others. All the others, not just our romantic relationships, although it is heavily geared toward that one to one romantic relationship. This is the opposite of the ascendant. This is how you see other people, your friends, your family, just other people at large. When you tend to say, hey, people always do X, Y, Z, you are referring to the traits of your seventh house, your descendant. This is the overall vibes or the feel of your relationships in your lifetime. It's also the types of partners that you will attract. In addition to that, any possible legal battles that you may face can um, be shown how they may play out with planets and the signs that are here and their aspects. Some celebs that we have, I have four, you should pick three, I have four this time. Justin Timberlake, uh, one of the most famous and successful singers of our generation. Whitney Houston, just a legend. Janet Jackson, another legend. And The Weeknd. Usually, this was an interesting placement because usually I would try to pick celebrities that represent the placement but in different ways, in different aspects. Because all placements have, you know, different ways that they show up. But these people, when I was researching, I just felt like the four, these four that stood out to me the most have such a similarity. So that was something that was different this time. So when it comes to Mercury, what are we talking about? We're talking about relationship things, of course. We are communicating to others in some fashion about what it is like to interact with others. Our conscious thoughts and our words are all geared towards conveying to someone else what it is like to interact with another person. So many feelings can come up when we are interacting with someone. Maybe you have a sister who's more popular. Maybe you have a dad who doesn't really listen to you when you talk. Maybe your classmates are in better physical shape than you. When we interact with any other human being at all, and especially when you add on the added element of a group dynamic, there are so many millions and millions of things that can come up. You may be interacting with somebody who makes more money than you. You may be inter you may be more interested in somebody than they are in you. There's all these different feelings that we all feel. Even if you don't have Mercury in the seventh year, that's just a human experience. And you guys really feel like the best way for you to deal with that and all those emotions is to verbalize it and get it out. You need your mercury it has a lot of energy and just imagine a mercury as a big cup of coffee with an extra shot of espresso it's very energetic and it's in the seventh it really needs an outlet you really need to tell other people how you feel you also really need that feedback from them when you tell other people the things that you're going through in your relationships of all kinds but especially your romantic relationships you also need other people to give you advice, to listen. You want their input for the things. You want other people to be like, oh, uh, when I felt that way, this is what I did. You want other people's stories. You're, you're sending out so much information, but you also want to receive 
you know, that same amount of information back. This helps you sort of mash it all together. All of your experiences, your thoughts, um, your stories, and then all the things. Like, let's say you're talking to your friend. I don't know. Kate. And all of her stories and experiences. And then you're talking to your friend, Amanda. And then you, you put them all together because it's all helping you learn what to do and how to best interact. You're learning how to best interact, not from a moon sense, not from an emotional sense. Like, how should I, I got my feelings hurt, so this is how I should proceed. This is a cerebral, it's a very cerebral, pre cere <laughs> very cerebral planet. And it is trying to gather data and collect information for how we can put our best foot forward when we are interacting with other human beings. Things that will come up, if something similar happened in your relationship that happened in my relationship, how would you respond? And this can be for a, for a variety of subjects such as how do you feel about monogamy? How do you feel about cheating? How do you feel about polyamory? How do you feel about independence? Do you let your partner spend a lot of time by themselves and you by yourself until you guys come back together? All of these things are aspects of every relationship that we have. And it varies because each of us is different as a person and then each person that we're interacting with is different and there's there's a million different variables the environment and your work schedule and all this kind of stuff so those are heavy topics of conversation for you guys we learn from experience but we also learn from others and once we synthesize all this information that is such and you never stop synthesizing it that is such a huge lesson for you to learn in your lifetime you are meant in this lifetime from the time you got here until the time you pass away to try to learn what is the best way for me personally to interact with other people what values do i stand on what are my boundaries how can i respect other people and their boundaries how can i have the most successful relationships friendships relationships with my family how can that be the best this is something super important to you and it's just something that your soul i guess we can say signed a contract if you want to think about it that way so come into this lifetime to learn it's not something for everyone even though we all face these aspects of interacting with other people we all interact with other people no one lives completely alone It's just not as big of a deal. Some people are content with like, hey, this is who I am. And you know, people who like it, like it. And people who don't, don't. Or some people just like may keep having dysfunctional relationships but not choose to change. You guys are very adaptable. Mercury is a very adaptable, quickly changing planet. It knows that, you know, when you make like a wrong turn on your GPS, it will reroute. Mercury is this, it's constantly trying to figure out how to get to this destination that we never really arrive at, but we're always driving toward of getting along the best way we think is possible with other people. Learning how to fit into the lives of others, learning how to fit others into your life. That's critical for you and it helps you evolve into the person that you are really meant to be. You're a very social person. You are a social animal. But this changes about how this changes how that looks from person to person. There are some of us who may put others before ourselves. There are some of us who put ourselves before others. For example, if you had a friend who had a birthday party at 8 p.m. and you got off at six and of work at six, and you're tired and you're not really in a mood, you don't really have a lot of money, and you're you really want to just go home and take a shower and go to sleep, but you also want to show up for your friend and you know that if you push yourself out there you probably will have a good time even though you will be tired and you don't have a lot of money there are those of us who carry fundamental beliefs whether they be conscious or not that hey what i want to do is the most important thing i love you i'm sorry that your birthday is at this day and time but i i just cannot personally give you that of me right now and then there are others of us who would say who do put the needs of others over ourselves and say, you know what, I'm tired, but I really want to show up for my friend. Or I know I don't have a lot of money, but maybe I can just drink a little bit while I'm, I'm there, not order too many drinks. I'm not going to say either one is good or bad. There's pros and cons to both, but 
this is what I mean when I say you're trying to figure out the best way to interact because there is no right answer to that question to that you know metaphorical scenario that I just um, put up that I'm sure a lot of us have been in in some you know fashion or another you continuously learn over the course of your life who when and how to be but you're not an amalgamation of others you're not this empty vessel that's just pieces of of this person and that person's conversation you're still yourself you are still an individual but you're just an individual who cares about relationships with others and that is a beautiful thing we humans are social creatures and i think this is a personal aside in this society we get so technologically advanced that we get we lose more and more sight of the fact each year that we are meant to interact it is scientifically proven it is in religion it is in moral philosophy that we are social animals so you being a person who cares and is interested in interacting with others is does not make you as an individual any less important to yourself if that makes sense so yeah because this like i just said the birthday party scenario if there's a million a million and one different scenarios of balancing the needs of others and ourselves and trying to figure out which one we really want to do and why which pros do we want to have and which cons do we want to avoid the most and it's really all up to you and your life and your experience just outside of astrology but you know we could add your chart in there as well so i would say just reflect on that re-watch this part and think about those times where you've tried to balance the needs of others and yourself and which ones did you pick and how did you feel and if you could go back in time would you do it the same would you do it different talk to other people about the times say hey when uh my sister wants me to watch her kids but i kind of want to be alone but i really miss them and i don't get to see them that much but this weekend just so happens to not be a good weekend stuff like that talk to other people and be like what do you think i should do and and way take the advice and the counsel of others and mix it in with your own and I think you will come up over time with good strategies and good boundaries that you feel like make you happy and make you feel like you're being true to yourself while still valuing your uh, interaction with other people. But because it is on, on an angle in such an important house, you know, you've got and all the houses are important, but the first, the seventh, the fourth and the tenth are like they really rev it up so again major theme in your life the closer that this is to the descendant the stronger this theme is the more important these topics are to you when we get back into the celebrities that i mentioned earlier we have whitney houston now we're going to get into this next topic a little bit and i'm going to use whitney houston and bobby brown to segue whitney houston is married to a singer your partner will be mercurial so not only do you have this element of verbalizing interactions with others and trying to figure that whole thing out the seventh house is about the partners that we attract the actual person that you are dating will be like the sign and like the planets and their aspects that is going to be the energy of the other the other person that you're dating so we have mercury here your partner will be mercurial whitney houston has it here her partner is going to be mercury like so when i looked at bobby brown's chart it was very interesting she's married to a singer again her partner is using their words bobby brown has no gemini in his chart and he didn't have any third house influence either but he had a moon in virgo which is co-ruled by mercury and he had a first house mercury himself she is dating well with someone partnered someone deep and seventh house is like i don't want to say lifelong commitments because it's not always but like these deep transformative like relationships that you never forget people you get married to people you have kids with people you always remember is a mercury person and he's got mercury in the first a singer so talking and using his voice lights the path of his life so i just thought that that was such like a literal example what it means for your partner to be mercurial they're gonna have to be intellectual smart sophisticated in a sense and they need to have a highbrow taste as far as the things that they are 
intellectually stimulated by somebody getting hit in the head with a coconut is not and making them laugh is not what they need that's more Sagittarius and I'm not coming at you guys because I'm a Sag but I know how we are you're not going to want someone who's like laughing at stupid shit or reading a picture book you want someone that's trying to really use their mind intellectual stimulation is one of the most important things to you the closer that it is to the descendant the more true that this will be you cannot deal with somebody just because of their looks now we're all human and that may pull us in from time to time but ultimately if a partner is not intellectually stimulating you you have to leave if they're not intellectually stimulating themselves you will be just not attracted you really love talking with your partner in all kind of ways on the phone facetime in person texting you're always just like sending these little bits of communication back and forth that's really going to keep the relationship feeling like it's alive to you feeling like you're interested feeling like you're nurturing it is when you're communicating with your partner someone more laconic is not going to interest you even if that person really loved you even if you guys have the same morals and values and when they did talk that you connected because there are those people in life like i'm a 12th house mercury we're not going to speak a lot for somebody with seven and a third me again somebody who may not speak a lot but when they do speak you connect that's still not really going to do it for you you need a verbal rapport to keep your romantic sustained interest money looks fame um, and because mercury moves so fast it's going to get bored like maybe after a couple dates maybe after one date or maybe in the middle of the first because uh, your love language is different it's more verbal speaking of love languages i would think that yours could very much be uh, words of affirmation lots of compliments uh, lots of i love you's lots of just verbalizing how we feel will really make you feel loved you want a person who is sort of gemini like someone who has a lot of hobbies and interests a finger in every pie someone who is always going from here to there you want a person who when you're interacting with them they're like oh uh, i was at the park today and then uh then i went to go see a movie and then i went food shopping and i got a sample of this wine and then i drove home and uh, i started reading this book and because each of those things is like um, the tip of the iceberg or like how a flower blooms where you are able to then have more conversation the more things that you're doing and this goes for anyone the more you have to talk about if you go to the same store every day and you buy the same ingredients and you make the same meal every day that's totally fine that's your life and there's nothing wrong with that but if someone is trying to have a conversation with you about cooking what are you gonna say oh i bought fish and rice and green beans again and that's no shade because that's what i had for dinner last night and it was amazing but if you are a type of person who makes something different every week you can say oh i tried brussels sprouts and then the other person could be like well i don't like brussels sprouts and then they could be like well why not well when i was a kid rah, 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 rah. there's just more to talk about when you have more experience so you really want a gemini like person because the gemini person is always flitting from here to there and they always have so much stuff to talk about because they've done so much and that really makes you like super interested in your partner and you also try to be that partner to them you don't try you kind of are and that just keeps you guys in love with each other keeps it really sustained if you are in a relationship and you find that you are having some staleness i would recommend you go out and do some things by yourself and maybe encourage your partner to go out and do some things by themselves and come back together and have that conversation and also being witty being funny making those jokes gemini is very funny and we forget that i think we always look to sagittarius to be funny but there is always there's a polarity and a duality between 
all oppositions. And I think I, maybe I just can speak for myself. I myself forgot how funny Gemini's can be until I recently met someone with a Gemini stellium and they were so funny. So that just helps you guys crack more jokes and be closer to each other. This person could also be very organized. Mercury co-rules Gemini. This could be someone who maybe likes to clean, makes a lot of lists, very health conscious, um, definitely running a lot of errands and very active in their day to day. That's still like a lot of mercurial energy, someone who's doing a lot of stuff, but it could be a lot of hobby stuff like Gemini, or it could be a lot of necessary stuff like Virgo. The relationship itself can tend to carry a lighter air. There can tend to be an absence of heavier energies such as jealousy or possession unless you have this in Scorpio. And if you have this in Scorpio, because of the, you know, time that we're in, it's highly likely that you may have this, you may have Pluto here as well. But if we just look at the planet itself, and especially if it is in a lighter sign, if it's in Gemini, oh my God, this video like you know squared if it's in libra if it's in aquarius um if it's in taurus maybe not taurus but like aries there's not going to be heavier themes as much it's not necessarily that you guys lack an emotional depth or an emotional connection to your partner it's rather you're just processing it more up here and less with that primal passion that let's say a Scorpio would. Like let's say you got Mercury conjunct Pluto in Scorpio, in late degree Scorpio, you know, close of the descendant is going to give a very much a heavier vibe than, you know, some of the other signs that I had just named. But it can look like to other people a lack of depth or maybe just hey those two people kind of seem like friends or like they're just kind of they don't really seem in love you guys are in love you're just showing it in a different way and everybody doesn't have to understand that that's okay it's your seventh house not theirs for example let's say your wife has to go away for six weeks to a different country so she can do some kind of training for her job somebody with heavier planets or more possessive planets um or with a lack of boundaries maybe like a like a pisces like you're in pisces in the seventh really might have a hard time letting go really might feel like the pining the missing the jealousy the paranoia you know those kinds of themes can pop up for but for you guys you guys are more circles you're more like oh, okay well she has to go do this i'll be here when she gets back you're not super jealous and then you're actually kind of interested because you're interested for her to come back and say what has she done you're interested to interact in a new way now i'm not seeing you face to face I'm communicating with you by FaceTime or on the phone or by email. You are interested to tell them what you've been doing while they've been gone. So that may just, again, look very like a lack of emotional depth, but it's just a different way of loving. Your relationship itself, and I'm not talking about the people again, I'm talking about the dynamic that the two people have together, which you both should feel. It should be filled with a variety of quick moving activities. An ideal day of dating for you guys, like let's say a Taurus might like to go on a picnic because you have Mercury here, you're going to want to go to trivia night, you know, play what's that game that you play when you drink at a bar? Is it called Quizzo or something like that? You guys go on a Quizzo trivia night. Perfect for you. You guys. Um, after that exploring somewhere new in your local community that you didn't know about trying a new sandwich shop new coffee shop or even if you go to the same places to eat you try something new every time quick moving activities you taking little trips around town taking local trips stuff like that where you're like you're here and you're doing something and then it's it doesn't last for very long and then you're over here and you're doing something else that's really going to just make you guys like glue. Constant small check-ins are very nice for you guys. You don't even need to be like some people could be on the phone for like an hour a day and then that could be it. You guys would like to maybe call for 10 minutes in the morning, call and talk for maybe 10 minutes at noon and at night talk for another 20 minutes. The constant small check-ins, the because Gemini likes to just keep flitting. 
they like to talk to you and then they're doing something else and they want to check back in with you and then they got to go to work and then at the end they're going to run to the grocery store and then they want to check back in with you one last time is a perfect way for you guys to sustain communication there could be an energy of duality here multiple partners or dating around to find what you like could be a manifestation it doesn't always have to be gemini's are not always cheaters although they did not get that reputation out of nowhere so keep that in mind this could just be a person trying to figure out what they like i often find that gemini's don't necessarily have a type as long as you're smart and you they feel like you're interesting you could range from what you look like to the personality type you they could date an extrovert or an introvert somebody very rich or very poor they don't super care about that they just care are you keeping me interested are you keeping my mind awake um, are you lighting up the light bulbs that are above my head that's really what they care about so you could date a lot of different people to find out who you feel is the best for you but i often feel like when once we set that intellectual element to the side there's not necessarily a type the type i would say the stereotypical definition of what we think of as when we think of type is something that you would look to the sign for this makes you, makes you very open-minded to dating a lot of different people maybe you date different religions different races that kind of stuff you know it's not doesn't bother you as much as it would bother maybe someone more i think the word's obstinate like a cancer someone who wants something more familiar there could could be a tendency to get bored quickly once you feel like you've understood or learned what this person is about once you had all the conversations you know when you first start talking to somebody you're catching them up on however x amount of years of life when I just happened and this happened and this is funny story and then you feel like you you know them you know all the key stories once you learn that you may feel that you have learned all there is to learn there is a reason why people think that Gemini is gets bored quickly and moves on you guys like to learn and once you feel like you've learned everything you want to move on and learn something else and you want to learn something new it's all about novelty and newness for a Gemini mercurial type of person so i would encourage you the way again that you keep that sustained and you keep that going is to constantly do new stuff with each other and if both individuals are doing new stuff by themselves so when you come back you still feel like you're you're having a newness and new and enriching conversations but yes maybe when you're younger or if this is poorly aspected or you know you've got other things in the chart you could you know be really interested in somebody for three weeks and get to know them and talk to them all the time and then you could be bored and then you could be going on to someone else doing the same thing until you learn to evolve if it is that you want to evolve if you want to do that so commitment itself may or may not be hard to come by in later years but you need to soak up a lot of knowledge about relationships listening to podcasts reading books talking listening to songs and stuff like that you feel like you need to do this and get this down packed before you enter into a committed relationship. And then once you enter into that committed relationship, it needs to have the qualities that I outlined above. As, as an aside, legal matters may be very interesting to you. Law, watching court cases, um, or even something as mundane as jury duty is something that you try to get a lot of knowledge about. You could be more informed than the average person this could be somebody who like let's say you get like a ticket or a fine you're someone who's reading the fine print to see like how can i m not manipulate this but like what things can in here can i take advantage of to make this work best in my you know to my situation and that is the beauty of mercury in the seventh house you guys can really make the law work for you because you take the time to dive in and read the fine print and learn what's going on to make it work for you and you get more out of the situation than i think somebody who would who didn't read the law or didn't read the fine print or just say okay i gotta pay this fine or i gotta show up at this time um keeping yourself informed about legal matters is just such a gift we all i feel like know so little about the law in this country and you guys take the time to learn so that's a beautiful thing so you guys this was such a straightforward placement some placements and some houses i feel like are kind of all over the place 
and I had to talk about like 10 different topics and I just feel like there's not enough time. This one was really straightforward and it's really easy. I really enjoyed it. So my final four thoughts. Number one, and this is to have the healthiest seventh house Mercury that you can. Inform yourself about relationships through a variety of media, books, podcasts, and conversations. Number two, choose partners who satisfy your mind. This is crucial. Number three, be open to dating a variety of partners so that you can understand what and who you like and what you don't like. And lastly, make sure to explore the law to whatever degree you want. So you guys, this has been Mercury in the Seventh. As always, please drop down in the comments and let's have a conversation about this placement. And also, thank you guys for being patient. I'm really not feeling well with my throat, but so I'm sorry if I, you know I'm hard to hear, but I just didn't want to put this video off any longer. So I will see you guys next time for Mercury in the Sixth.